then the first the four important the fourth important point is the the nature the natural uh the nature of the sample whether the sample is neutral whether the sample is ionic or whether the sample is non ionic now what is the intention behind focusing on to the, the the nature of the sample with respect to its ionization or whether it is not undergoing ionization because that will determine whether the compound is non polar or the polar See, as I said uh, at the beginning of the session, in case of reverse phase chromatography, how the resolution take place or how the retention take place in reverse phase chromatography, what is the number one factor that comes to your mind? Please type in a chart box. That becomes the determining governing force for the retention of the compound, and that is none other than the hydrophobicity of the compound, isn't it? Type H for hydrophobicity in the chart box. Hmm. It is not the hydrophilicity, but the hydrophobicity or the non-polar interaction, or you can say the NP for non-polar interaction. Because why it is a hydrophobic interaction or the non-polar interaction? Why? Because our stationary phase itself is hydrophobic. Right? If you look at the reverse phase chromatography, what is the kind of stationary phase you use? Any example, can you able to put into chat box, right? C8 and C18 are a very popular example of our reverse space columns. And what is this C8 and C18? C18 is octa, octal, silane. That means it is the long carbon chain containing carbon and hydrogen, but it consists of the carbon and hydrogen. And there is no presence of double bond or triple bond. They are not unsaturated, but they are saturated hydrocarbons. They are saturated hydrocarbons. So are they polar in the nature or are they non-polar in the nature type in a chart box? CH compounds, like what they are, alkyl compounds. They are alkyl bonded stationary phases, C8 or C18. So all they are non-polar in the nature, right? All C8 or C18 stationary phases are non-polar in the nature. Now, if there is a non-polar stationary phase, I hope you also uh, must be aware about the very important rule that is called as a like attracts like or like dissolves like. How many of you know this rule? Like dissolve like, like polar compound dissolves polar analyte or solute. Uh, the non-polar diluent can dissolve the non-polar analyte. Type me in the chat box if you know this rule, the like attracts like rule. Okay, so if you just implement this rule into the non-polar stationary phase, so if I ask you if the stationary phase is non-polar now, like C8 or C18, and if you go with the rule of like attracts like, so what kind of analytes will have more interaction with the non-polar stationary phase? Type your response into chart box. You bum, you are right. So all non-polar compounds, right? All non-polar compounds, like hydrocarbons, neutral compounds, they are going to have the good amount of interaction with our non-polar or hydrophobic stationary phase. Hydrophobic stationary phase. So isn't it important for you to understand whether your compound is non-polar or polar? Hmm? Type I for important into chart box. Whether a compound is non-polar or polar, that is going to determine whether your compound can return onto the C8 or C18 stationary phase or not. So with this logic, can I say that if the compound is highly nonpolar, that is going to retain for the longer time? Yeah. Type yes or no in the chat box. But I said if the compound is highly nonpolar, can now I say that the compound is going to retain for the longer time onto the nonpolar stationary phase? RPLC, reverse phase liquid chromatography, absolutely yes. And vice versa. Means if the compound is polar in the nature, now what do you expect out of the retention now? Will it retain for longer time or shorter time type in the chart box? And that is number of the shortcomings or the challenge when it comes to reverse phase chromatography. Have you ever worked with the, the organic acids like uh, ascorbic acid uh, and uh, the the another uh, uh, organic acids. <clears throat> so what is the retention time 
generally you will observe for such kind of organic acids carboxylic acids because these are the acids which are highly highly polar in the nature remember the carboxylic acid functional groups bring a brings lot of polarity brings a lot of polarity to the compound now if the compound is polar like uh, carboxylic acid so what do you expect to happen as far as retention time is concerned hmm? will it elute early or elute late type in the chart box and that becomes the number one challenge it is very challenging to retain the polar compound for longer time in the reverse phase chromatography yes or no so how one can overcome that we'll talk about that uh, when we move on to the another segment of the presentation but understand that the nature of the compound as per as is non ionic or ionic is very important if your compound is ionic like acid base or organic salt then what is possible that your compound may remain non ionized or your compound can go into ionization yes or no now what determines if there is acid given to you hmm? if there is acid given to you, like carboxylic acid so roughly tell me in a chart box if you maintain the ph of the mobile phase acidic what is likely chances of its ionization will the compound uh, undergo ionization or will it remain non ionized type into chart box acid into acidic uh, diluent hmm? it will not undergo ionization right it is a weak acidic compound so in acidic media it will not undergo ionization talking about very thumb rule concept hmm? we will talk much about in the details when we move about the when we move on the point number 6 uh, but what will happen if the same weak acidic compound now is in the alkaline ph like uh, 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide so what is going to happen now will this uh, weak acidic compound undergoes ionization now hmm? ips or no in the chat box so yes now so the you realize that you know the ph of the surrounding is going to determine the ionization of the polar comp ionic compounds like acid base and organic salts yes or no you can retain the compound into non ionic state or you can make it into ionic state so i have a question for you if the compound uh, gets ionized means it develops the plus charge and the minus charge right we call that is now the the polarized compound so as per as this reverse phase retention is concerned what is going to be the possible retention time of the polarized compound now Hmm. you have a ascorbic acid for example and it is now polarized so what do you think will it retain for again longer time as compared to the neutral uh, ascorbic acid now that is your standard point isn't it so in comparison to ascorbic acid unpolarized what is going to be the retention time of the polarized ascorbic acid is it less or more type in the chart box if you understand the concept less or more type in the chart box see understand one thing the more the compound is getting ionization what we just talked it is going to become more polar yes or no and what is the the reverse phase chromatography retention mechanism will the polar compound retain for longer time or shorter time yeah will the polar compound now this ascorbic acid polarized ascorbic acid how it is going to retain for the longer time hmm? it is certainly going to retain much much lower time as compared to the the unpolarized uh, uh, ascorbic acid isn't it so do you understand that the ionization of the compound reduces the retention time in reverse phase chromatography ionized compound have the short retention time into the reverse phase liquid chromatography type yes in the chat box if you understand this very important statement hmm? similarly can i say that the unionized compound or non ionized compound is going to retain for longer amount of the time in the reverse phase chromatography so this is the two important points we learn from the point number 5 now we talked about the ionization of the compound isn't it for ascorbic acid it will ionize into the alkaline ph may not i get ionized into the acidic ph so what will determine or define 
whether the compound is going to remain into non-ionic state or the ionic state, please type in the chat box. Now, this is a very important point, and that is certainly going to help you in determining the pH of your mobile phase. Poonam Patel, you're right. Chandra Sekharan, you're right. Hmm. What is going to determine the ionization state of the compound? For example, the ascorbic acid were taken. We said that the ascorbic acid will remain unionized, unionized into the acidic medium and it will undergo ionization under the alkaline medium. So I'm talking about which concept now? I'm talking about the pH of the surrounding, isn't it? So pH is going to determine the important ionization. But is that the only point which is going to determine the, the ionization of the compound? Or is there something which is a very related to the compound's uh, uh, intrinsic property? Hmm? The, the, that is going to determine that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you people are right. And that is nothing but the pKa of the compound. The acid dissociation constant of the compound is also very important to realize the percent ionization. What? To realize the percent ionization. So pH alone will not help you to determine whether the compound will be into ionic state or the non-ionic state, but you have to have the pK of the compound in hand to exactly determine the percent ionization. So that is the point that we're going to talk how the pK is relevant to the HPLC method development. Hmm? How the pKa of the compound is relevant to the HPLC method development. See, understand one thing that there is a very popular statement about the, the pH, pKa, and the percent ionization. What is that? Can anyone type in a chat box? What is that very popular statement? We call that, you know, if the pH equal to pKa, how much is the percent ionization? If the pH is just equal to pKa, how much is the percent ionization equal to 50%, right? All of you have typed 50 in the chat box and thank you so much for your response. But is there any way to determine this uh, value with the help of any equation? And yes, there is a way forward that you can able to <clears throat> determine the percent ionization of the compound if you know the equation derived from the anderson hasselbach equation. anderson hasselbach equation will help you to determine the percent ionization of the compound. How many of you heard about this equation? anderson hasselbach equation? Yeah, type HH in the chat box if you know about the anderson uh, yeah. Now, this is the equation, right? anderson hasselbach equation, which is going to help us in determining the percent ionization of the compound. This is a very powerful equation. This is a very powerful tool, which will help you to understand whether the compound can retain for longer time or shorter time. So please pay your complete attention on uh, the equation because uh, it's very important for you to realize and um, understand the probable retention of your compound. So if your compound is weak acid, and if your compound is weak base, for these two compounds, the anderson hasselbach equation is little different. You cannot use the same equation for weakly acidic compound or weakly basic compound. So shall I break the equation on the board? Type BIO for bring it on. Yeah, with the complete attention that we're going to pay the complete attention on the talk now. And let me bring that over here, the very first equation to assign or calculate the percent ionization of weakly acidic compound. And here is the equation on your screen. The percent ionization is equal to 10 raised to pH minus pKa divided by 10 raised to pH minus pKa plus 1 into 100. That is a simple form of the equation, which will help you to calculate the percent ionization. So what are the factors you should know to determine the percent ionization? Only two important factors. The first one is the pK of the compound. And the second one is the pH of the surrounding. If you know these two important factors, you can calculate the percent ionization of the compound. Let us uh, discuss this with the help of suitable example now. Let us assume you have the, the weak acid compound in the hand, right? I hope you are 
uh, focus now, please. Uh, and the, the pK of the compound is 4. What is the pK of the compound? The pK of the compound is 4. And uh, you have asked to calculate the percent ionization. If the pH equal to 2, if the pH of the surrounding equal to 4, and if the pH of the surrounding is equal to 6. By using the same equation, you can realize that if the pH of the surrounding is 2, then the percent ionization, if you substitute the values over here, the values of the pK and the pH, you will come to know that only 1%. Around 1% of the compound will only undergo ionization. How much percent? Only 1% compound has undergone ionization. The rest 99% compound is in what? Is into non-ionic state. So if I ask you, now what is the, the pH of the, system, uh, of the surrounding? Is 2. And what is the pK of the compound? Is 4. So pK minus 2 is the given pH. How much is the pH now? The pK minus 2. Do you understand this point? pK minus 2? pK minus 2? Because pH equal to 4. And 4 minus 2 becomes pH 2. So I said that what happens to acid if pH is just equal to pK minus 2? What is your response? What do you think? If I just have the pH equal to pK minus 2, how much is the percent ionization? And how much is the percent of the compound stays unionized? Overall, overall, can I say that if the pH is equal to pK minus 2, the compound is almost into non-ionic state? Hmm? Is it true or false? Type in the chat box. If I say that the pH equal to pK minus 2, the compound almost stays into a non-ionic state. Type true or false into chat box. Understand, the percent ionization at this point is just going to be 1%. The percent ionization of the compound at pH equal to pK minus 2 is just going to be 1%. So roughly, can I say that the compound stays unionized if the pH of the surrounding, the mobile phase or diluent is equal to pH, pK minus 2? Yeah, type true or false into chart box. Now, this is the first lesson we learn. If you really want to maintain the pH, uh, sorry, if you really want to uh, maintain the compound into non-ionic state or non-polar state, non-polar state, what is the suitable pH that you are going to select? Is it pK minus 2? If yes, type yes in the chat box. That pK minus 2 pH is going to get your compound almost non-ionized or mostly into non-polar state. So if you understand now the compound is into non-polar state, please let me know into chat box whether this compound will retain for longer time or shorter time. What is expected uh, retention time for this compound? Hmm? Longer or shorter type in a chat box, right? Because compound is mostly non-polar and I'm asking this question in the context of reverse phase chromatography, isn't it? And we very well know that the compound is going to retain for the longer time being a non-polar compound. How many of you understand this uh, calculation part? How many of you understand how the compound remains uh, for uh, retained for the longer time? Please type me in the chat box. Please type me in the chat box if you really understand the, this entire concept of the pH and pKa, at least for acidic compound, how the compound can you know retain for the longer time. Thank you so much for your response. And I'm super excited to uh, move ahead with the, the second example now. So in case if you're not understood it, sometimes it may not get very straightforward. So please now be focused and attentive. Hmm? I'm going to explain one more time. So if the compound uh, having the same pK is equal to 4, hmm? and uh, if I maintain the pH equal to 4, how much is the percent ionization going to be? Can you guess? Yeah. Any guess? How much is the percent ionization going to happen? And as I said that there is a very popular equation. If the pH just equal to pKa, your compound undergoes 50% ionization, isn't it? Yes or no? Yeah. 50% So substitute the values over here in the equation now. 
and you will realize that at pH equal to four, my compound has undergone fifty percent ionization. So, what happens to acid? If pH is just equal to pKa, what happens to acid? And I'm talking in the context of its polarity or non-polarity. See, in the chromatography, reverse phase chromatography, we have to understand the, the polarity of the compound, isn't it? Now, if I ask you if the pH is just equal to pKa, what is going to be the polarity of this compound? Is it going to be polar, bipolar, or non-polar type in a chart box? I have given the three op options to you. Is it a polar compound? Is it a mid-polar compound? Or is it a non-polar compound? Hmm? What is your appropriate response? Please type in the chat box. So 50% ionic means what? Still there is a 50% non-ionic. So I think uh, rather than saying a polar compound, I think mid-polar is the, is the better choice. Hmm? The mid-polar is the better choice. And hence, you know, what is going to be now? If you compare the retention time of the compound, of this mid-polar compound with the mostly non-polar compound. Relatively, I'm asking you, what is the likely retention time? Will it be more than the non-polar compound or will it be the less than the non-polar compound? You have to type in the chart box. Hmm? Less or more? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. You can uh, get it very easily. Glad to know that. And the compound is going to have the less retention time as compared to the non-polar compound. I'll just say it's a moderate retention time as compared to it. Let us now understand, if the pH is equal to 6, can you guess what is going to be the percent ionization if the pH equal to 6? Yeah, obviously the, the pKa of the compound is 4 now. Yes, you are right. So many of you are right. So it is certainly going to be, if you substitute the values into the equation, you will realize that the percent ionization of the compound is almost 99%. What? The 99% compound remain into ionic state. And how many percent of the compound, how much compound stays into a non-ionic? It is only 1% compound stays into non-ionic. So if I ask you, if I ask you the question, what happens to acid if pH is just pK plus 2? pK is how much is the 4 and 4 plus 2 happens to be 6. So you know that what is the state of the compound at the pH equal to 6? Is it polar compound or is it a non-polar compound? You have to type in the chart box. It is going to be non-polar or polar now? See, understand 99% compound has ionized or polarized. In that way, the compound has become highly polar. What? The compound has become highly polar. So please understand now, a given acid, a given acid at the pH equal to pK plus 2 always remains almost polarized. What? Always remains almost polarized. So if it is the polarized compound, what is the likely retention time of this compound as compared to this mostly non-polar state of the compound, whether with the mid-polar comparison? What is the likely retention, less or more type in a chart box? So very less, yeah, absolutely. So the retention of the compound is going to be very, very poor because now the compound is mostly polar in its state. So please understand, very important information over here. And what is that? If you adjust the pH, Less than two, less than two of its pKa, the compound remains non-polar. If you have the pH less than two units by its pKa value, the compound remains non-polar. How many of you understand? Type U for understand in the chat box, right? If you adjust the pH of the diluent or mobile phase, right, by less than two units of its pKa the compound remains non-polar, the very first point. If you look at the last point now, if you adjust the pH of the surrounding or mobile phase, two units more than its pKa value, what happens? The compound remains polarized or non-polarized? 
type in the chat box. What happens? If the pH is equal to pKa plus 2, hmm, that is the polarized. That is the polarized. So which uh, uh, pH will help you to retain the compound for longer time? I'm talking about the acidic compound. pKa plus 2 or pKa minus 2 type in the chart box. What is the suitable pH to retain your weakly acidic compound for longer time in reverse space liquid chromatography? pK minus 2 or pK plus 2, you have two options. Absolutely, it's a pK minus 2 is going to help us to retain the compound for longer time in the RPLC. Excellent. So I hope you understand uh, the retention behavior of weak acid in the reverse space chromatography with respect to its pH and pK. Type yes in the chart box or give me thumbs up into chart box if you really understand how you can manipulate, how you can change the, the retention of the weakly acidic compound if you know the pH and the pK of the compound. Thank you so much. I appreciate your response. And in the similar way, you will be able to understand the percent ionization for the weakly basic compound too. Hmm? You can also be able to understand the, uh, the ionization of the weakly basic compound too. Here is the calculation formula. Percent ionization is equal to 10 raised to pK minus pH divided by 10 raised to pK minus pH plus 1 into 100%. And then again, I will walk you through the similar example. Again, this is the pK is equal to 4, but uh, the compound is uh, weakly as basic in the nature. Now, what is going to happen to its percent ionization if the pH equal to 2? Any guesses? How much is the percent ionization going to be? Thank you so much. Some of you have given the right answer over here. See, the basic compounds always undergo ionization if the pH is less than its pK value. So now the pH is less than the pK value by two units and you will have almost 99% ionization. How much 99? Again, I build the same statement over here. What happens? Please respond into chat box. What happens to base if pH is pK minus 2? I'm talking about whether the compound remains polar, whether compounds remains non-polar or mid-polar. Please type in a chat box now. Hmm? So compound has actually mostly polar in its state. Right? The compound is almost mostly polar in the state. And now you understand if the compound is mostly polar in the state, what is going to be the likely retention time? Hmm? In the reverse space chromatography, it is going to be the less retention of the poor retention. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Wonderful. What is going to happen if the pH is equal to pKa? Hmm? We know it is 50% ionization. And uh, what happens to base if the pH is just equal to pKa? Hmm? Again, this is going to be a mid-polar compound, right? 50% ionization. And then you can understand that as compared to now, the mostly polar compound, this mid-polar compound is going to have the moderate retention time, a little increased retention time. But if you talk about the pH equal to 6 now, if the pH is more than the pK value by 2 units, pK is equal to 4, and the pH is 4 plus 2, now what is the likely percent ionization can you tell in a chart box yeah and it is going to be almost only one percent only one percent only one percent compound see understand that the higher the pka ph than the pka higher the ph than the pka the compound i'm talking about the alkaline compounds please remember this the compound is going to undergo non-ionization or the compound is going to remain non-ionized Right. So what happens to base if the pH is pKa plus 2? pKa plus 2, the compound is going to remain what? Ionic or non-ionic? Yes, if the compound is going to remain non-ionic. And if the compound is non-ionic, what is likely retention time of this compound now? Is it going to retain for longer time or shorter time? Very easy to understand. The compound is going to have the better retention time. So this pKa plus pH concept will help us in understanding the possible retention time of the compound, the possible retention time of the compound. So please uh, allow me to explain this concept further now. 
and uh, i'm going to bring one diagram onto the screen and this is the summary of what we discussed uh, as a part of the point number 6 or the pka i hope you can see the diagram so there is a pka values across x axis and the retention factor across y axis so this is the compound having the pk is equal to 5 hmm? what is the pk of the compound this is the acidic compound by the way you can uh, look in the diagram and the pk of the compound is close to 5 <clears throat> close to 5 so this is about its uh, <clears throat> its retention time so what you can conclude if i ask you a question uh the retention time of the compound in the acidic ph is low or high please type in the chat box or lower than the pk i have a question for you please understand the question and then you can respond if the ph is equal is if the ph is less than pk of the compound if the ph is less than the pk of the compound what is the retention time is it less or more type in a chart box is it longer or shorter please type in a chart box if the ph is less than the pk of the compound what is going to happen onto the retention time the longer retention or the shorter retention <laughs> thank you so much absolutely it is going to have look at here now this y value is long high more or less <laughs> If you move to the pH 4, please tell me in the chat box. This is the pH, uh, 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 the, the pK 4. Now, this is the this is the, 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 the retention time, maybe something over here. But if I reduce the pH towards the, the acidic side, like 4 or 3 or 2, do we think that the, the retention time is getting increased? Hmm? Type yes or no in the chat. And that is the equation that the lower is the pH as compared to the pKa, the more will be the retention time. But what happens uh, if the pH is equal to 1 or 2? Do you think that the, the retention time gets changed? I'm talking about the window of the pH from 1 to 2. Hmm? Type yes or no in the chat box. Do you see that there is a change, increase in retention time? There is a decrease in retention time or the retention time remains same type in the chat box from one to two. Yeah. Now, why it is not changing? Why it is not changing? Any, any guess why it is not changing? Yeah. Even for three to three to onwards, three and less than three, maybe 2.5 to 1.5. Your pH, your uh, retention time is not changing. Yes or no? Your retention time is not changing. What is the reason? What is the reason? Yeah, Santosh, you are right. <clears throat> so you can easily see from pH equal to 5 to 4, there is a good amount of jump. From 4 to 3, again, there is a good amount of jump. But if you go to 3 and uh, lower than 3, you see, there is a no change in the retention time. Now, why? Now, what is the uh, on which the retention time is dependent? Type in a chart box. On which the, Indian, the retention time is dependent? On to the percent ionization of the compound. Yes or no? The retention time is dependent on to the percent ionization. Yes or no? Type in a chart box. The retention time is dependent on to the percent ionization. So as long as there is a change in the percent ionization, <clears throat> can you expect the change in retention time also? As long as there is a change in percent ionization, can you expect the change in the retention time also? Hmm? Yes, all right. So in acidic compound or in any compound, now what is likely percent ionization if you go the pH, which is pK minus some value, pK minus some value. Suppose pK minus 1, what is the percent ionization going to be? Or let us first understand, what is going to be the percent ionization at pH equal to 5? Let us begin with that point. What is the percent ionization when the pH is equal to uh, 5? Now, why 5? Because 5 is our compound's pKa. 
What is 5? The 5 is the compounds pKa. So if the pH is equal to pKa, we know that there is a going to be a 50% ionization, isn't it? So if I ask you, what is going to be the percent ionization when the pH of the compound, the pH of the surrounding is uh, 4? Roughly, roughly. Yeah. Or just, uh, just type in a chat box, less ionized or more ionized. More than 50% ionized or less than 50% ionized. Let us, let us know that. More than 50% ionized or less than 50% ionized. Is it going to be less than 50% ionization or more than 50% ionization? Hmm? If the pH equal to 4 now, we can calculate exactly by the calculation formula, but I am just asking you roughly. It is going to be, Prakash, uh, not more than 50%. Please understand that a acidic compound has less ionization in the acidic pH. It's a very thumb rule, right? The acidic compound will have the less ionization into the acidic pH. Now, as I am going towards the acidic pH, one can easily understand that, oh, now the percent ionization will get reduced. Yes or no? So from pH 5 to 4, I can expect the lower percent ionization. Yes or no? And if there is a lower percent ionization happening, let us understand this. Whether you understand this point, if I move from pH 5 to 4, this acidic compound will have the less ionization less than the 50 percent ionization type u in the chat box if you understand this hmm? type u in the chat box if you understand this i'm moving from ph from five to four right i'm going to have the lesser and lesser ionization so if the ionization is getting reduced can i also say that the the compound is becoming little non-polar now hmm? the compound is becoming non-polar now type yes or no in the chat box Maybe only 30% ionization at pH equal to 4. 50 has, uh, uh, pH 5 has 50% ionization. And the pH 4 will bring 30% ionization. I can easily see that, okay, now the compound is becoming more non-polar. And our reverse space chromatography can always tell us what is likely retention time. In case, now my non-polarity has increased slightly. Will it have the more retention time or uh, less retention time? I'm talking about the pH 4 situation. Yes, Imran, you're right. So you are going to have the more retention time. And can you see in the uh, this particular curve that uh, at the pH equal to 4, you are going to have the higher retention time, type yes or no in the chat box. Can you see that there is going to be the higher retention time at the lower pH now? And then if the pH equal to 3, if the pH equal to 3 now, what is the likely retention time? What is likely percent ionization? Let us talk about the very fundamental first. What is going to be the percent ionization if the pH equal to 3? Hmm, absolutely. I think Nidhal, you are right. Chandra Sekharan, you are right. Ajay, absolutely great. It is going to be only 1% ionization. How much percent? It is going to be almost only 1% ionization. Or can I say that? The compound is going to remain non-ionic now. Yes, Rahul, can I say now the compound is going to remain non-ionic? So with absolutely, right? So if it is non-ionic, then the retention time will be higher. Yes or no? Higher than pH equal to 5, pH equal to 4. So if I go further to, to uh, pH 2, if I go further to pH 2, how much is the percent ionization type in a chart box? If I go for pH equal to 2 now, hmm? almost none, right? Or 0% ionization? Yes or no? Or no ionization? Can I say that? If I go to pH 1.5, if I go to pH 1.5, how much is the percent ionization? Oh, again, 0%. If I go to pH 1, how much is the percent ionization? It's again none, means 0% ionization. So can I see any change in its uh, polarity, pH2 onwards? Do I see any change in the compound's polarity or compound's ionization state uh, beyond pH2? Uh, type yes or no in the chat box. Yeah. 
and hence it, and there is no change in the compounds ionization isn't it there is no change in the compounds ionization below ph2 you take 2 1.8 1.5 1 we can say that the 100% compound is non ionized then if there is no change into the compounds polarity how can i expect the change in the retention time as we said correctly now that beyond ph2 there is no change in the compounds polarity then how can we expect the change in the retention time can you expect the change in the retention time please type yes or no in the chat box i am talking about the ph below 2 hmm? and hence you can see in the diagram that beyond certain ph as there is no change into the compounds polarity there is also no change in the compounds retention time there is also no change in the compounds retention time how many of you understand this point yeah type u for understand in the chat box that yes you are now clear why there is no change in the retention time beyond ph2 or 2.5 hmm? and then if you look at the higher ph let us uh, let us uh, shift our attention towards the alkaline ph alkaline ph so what is the likely percent ionization if the ph equal to 7 If the pH equal to 7 and this is the compounds having the pH pK equal to 5. So how much percent compound will undergo ionization? If the pK, if the pH equal to pK minus 2, almost 99% compound, right? How much percent? Almost 99% compound will undergo ionization. Compound having pK 5. If you calculate this, you will find that the 99% compound has undergone ionization. So if the PS7 make the compound polarized, what is the likely retention time of the same compound in comparison to pH equal to 4 or 5, less or more type in a chart box? Hmm? Right now you understand the percent ionization. Almost 99% means compound is polarized. And you can easily understand that the compound will have the shorter retention time. Can you see in the diagram that yes, for the pH greater than pKa, you can see the, the drop in the retention time. Type yes or no in the chat box. Can you see that the retention time is now slowly, slowly decreases? The moment the pH is increasing more than the pKa value, like 6 or 7, Tell me in the chart box, if the pH is equal to 8, what is the likely percent ionization? Hmm? So it is going to be 100%. If the pH equal to 9, what is going to be the likely percent ionization? What is the ionization? Uh, if the pH equal to 10 and 11 or 12, can you see that the only it remains 100%, no change in the percent ionization? So beyond 8, we can see that, oh, there is no change in the percent ionization. So if there is no change in the percent ionization happening now, beyond pH 8, can I also expect that the no change in the retention time will also happen beyond pH 8? Type yes or no in the chat box. You, think you keep pH 8, 8.5, 9, 9.5, 10, you are going to have the similar retention time because the compound has achieved its 100% ionization state. And beyond that, it is not possible. Hmm? I hope you understand this complete uh, diagram as far as its uh, pH and the, the retention behavior is concerned. Type yes, no in the chat box. Type yes, no in the chat box. And again, there is very important point. Please, uh, please let me understand. Now, in which pH range you are going to have the uh, significant change in the retention time? In which pH range you can see there is a significant change in the retention time taking place? What is the pH range? Look at the diagram and please tell me in the chat box. Yeah, 2 to 6, 3 to 5, 6 to 4. Hmm? Now, this is the pH range. 
where what happens your compound will have a drastic change in the retention retention time with the minute change in the ph of the mobile phase yes or no if you intend to attain the ph of 5 but for some reason if you uh, have the error of let us say 4.8 or 5.2 you can expect the lot of change in the retention time so i am asking you is this the right window as per as uh, repeatability of retention time is concerned what do you call that maybe 3 to 7 or something like that is it the right ph window to achieve the reproducible retention time type yes or no in the chat box 3 to 7 3 to 7 hmm? now in this range you can see oh my god the retention time is uh, changing a lot of value right it is changing drastically and this is not the suitable ph range as per as the reproducibility of the retention time is concerned so if i ask you select the ph range which is going to give the more reproducible retention time what is your response please type in the chat box in which ph range you did not see much change in the retention time please type in the chat box yeah show me your right absolutely nidal thank you so much mohan give me the range what is the ph range in which there is no much change in the retention time 1 to 3 do I, do I agree on this point 1 to 3 and uh, maybe again beyond it beyond it beyond it there is no change so Please type A for agree into chat box if you agree that in these two ranges, the change in the retention time is, is, is very negligible, is very negligible. So what is the lesson we learn now? Please understand this important point. What is the lesson we learn? One should not select the pH equal to pK plus or minus 2. One should not select the pH equal to pK plus or minus 2. Otherwise, what is going to happen? Please type in a chat box. If you select the pH equal to pK plus or minus 2, what is the end result going to be? Absolutely, Santosh, thank you so much. Mahesh, thank you so much. You are going to have a lot of change in the retention time. So just, just uh, connect these learnings with your uh, existing testing procedure and please answer into chat box. Do you have any situation into your lab where you will finding lot of retention time variation? Please type yes in the chat box if you often seen the lot of retention time. So this could be the one reason for the variation into the retention time. Yeah. So please, when you visit lab tomorrow, try to understand that whether the pH has been selected appropriately or not. I think this is a great lesson. How many of you are finding this is the valuable lesson? Type V for valuable into chat box. Thank you so much. I'm happy that you all are learning something, something very valuable. And uh, if you look at the retention of the weak base, if you look at the retention of the weak basic compound, now this is the curve. This is the curve one can expect. Again, the, the pK of the compound is 5. Across x axis, it's a pH. Across y axis, it is the, uh, the uh, retention factor. Now, please tell me in a chat box. Tell me in a chat box. Why this B and BH plus is denoted? What is the meaning of this BH plus over here? Can you look at this diagram and please type in the chat box? What is mean by BH plus? Hmm? Absolutely, Shobit, you are very fast and I'm glad to have that you on the board today. Devendra, thank you so much. You are right. Shivan, you are right. This is the protonated base or I can say ionized base. Yes or no? This is ionized. So always remember, if the base is available and if you have the pH uh, less than pK value, you can expect the ionization of the basic compound. And what this B denotes, what this B denotes on the another side of this curve, what this B denotes, 
it is the unionized state of the basic compound it is what the unionized state of the basic compound that means if you have the ph greater than the pka the basic compound uh, stays into the non ionic state right state into the non ionic state a very simple thumb rule acidic remains as non ionic into the acidic ph and base remains uh, non ionic into the alkaline ph but again you can understand that what is going to happen the retention time beyond uh, let us say ph 8 or after the ph 8 do you expect any change in the retention time type yes or no in the chat box with the same concept right the we discussed about the weakly acidic compound the same thing can you implement over here and you can understand that there is no going to be further uh, non ionization it has reached to the 0% ionization right uh, sorry 0% uh, yeah 0% uh, uh, ionization or 100% non ionization and then if you take ph 9 or 10 or 11 and 12 also the compound is going to remain non ionic so it's the compound will no change in its polarity and hence no change in the retention time also same is the case for you can expect for the lower ph also like ph um, 3 to 2 to 1 again there is no further uh, increase in uh, percent ionization is going to happen it is almost reached to the 100% now the further decreasing the ph is not going to result into the change into the ionic state of the compound and if there is no change into the polarity ionic state no change in the retention time can be expected so again in this case which ph will give the better retention time for the compound having pk equal to 5 alkaline compound type in the chat box i know which compound which ph is going to give the higher retention time i'm talking about which ph will give the higher retention time for this compound pk equal to 5 basic compound absolutely greater than ph 8 <laughs> the greater than ph 8 is going to you know remain maintain the compound into the non ionic state non polar and hence a higher retention time so which ph is going to give the least retention time for this compound type in a chat box which ph is going to give the least retention time for this compound you can say less than 3 or maybe 2 or something like that thank you so much i really appreciate your response now i hope you understand what is the appropriate ph range that you have to select in case if your compound undergoes ionization if your compound undergoes ionization will you be able to understand uh the the ph suitable ph for your mobile face type yes or no in the chat box now now will you be able to understand will you be able to formulate the ph to maintain the reproducible retention time for your compound absolutely thank you so much i really appreciate your response and i am glad to know that you are learning something today